will be 26 years old today. He or she was someone who could have shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. My Lord, my Savior, my God. He or she could have been someone's teacher or doctor. He or she could have been someone's husband or wife. And that was just one child. One life of potential aborted. Sadly, I had several abortions over a span of time. So I was not just a murderer. I was a serial killer. That is the reality of abortion. Many of us know the statistics, right? Approximately 45% of women who have an abortion will have another. That was me. That as an African American woman, while making up only 37% of Georgia's population of women from the ages of 15 to 44, a staggering 61% of women have abortions who are black women, just like me that the most unsafe place for my children was in my womb. I helped the numbers we pray and mourn about today. That is the reality of abortion. I was a woman who was broken. I was selfish. I lacked discipline. I lacked self-control. I was in and out of broken relationships um, because I lacked self-worth. As a child, I was even told by my old mother that she wanted to abort me because I was a product of an abusive man that she hated. All these things factored into me seeking love and validation in places that can only be filled by the true and living God. Now, I'm not making excuses for the sins that I willingly chose to do, the lives I took. I'm sharing the reality of brokenness in my life at that time. I walked into abortion clinics to pay for what's considered the easy option. I could keep it as my dirty little secret. I just went and handled the situation. I always knew that abortion wasn't the right thing to do. It never sat well in my heart. But after each abortion, my heart grew colder and colder, making it easy to have another. And that's exactly what abortion is designed to do. I had the surgical abortion where each baby was ripped out of my room through suction, lying in the bed in the cold clinical room, I would see the surgical instruments lying on the instrument tray and then the machine was sitting at the back of the bed where those babies' lives were sucked into. Then I had the medical abortion, which is the abortion pill RU486 that I obtained from a Planned Parenthood right here in Georgia. Now at the time that I had the medical abortion, I chose it because it's advertised as the easier and less invasive option. Little did I know that I would feel the baby pass while I was at home alone going through that process. And I know and I believe in my heart because the Lord told me that it was a little girl. I flushed her down the toilet. After that, I went into major guilt and depression. I could visualize over and over again that baby girl going down the drain. I ended up trying to take my own life because of that guilt and that shame. The state of depression was just so heavy because I could just keep remembering and it took a long time to forgive myself. Because you see, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy all parties involved. The baby, the mother, the father, and everyone else who's involved. 
And I can tell you, every place I went to, not just the Planned Parenthood facility, all the waiting rooms were packed, and most people were African American like me, or Hispanic. That is the reality of abortion. At any point in time, I could have died on those abortion tables, or I could have bled to death on my bathroom floor while I was home alone, by myself going through the process of that abortion pill. But Jesus had other plans for my life. And today, my message, my mess is a message for all of you. The world uses people such as actresses, comedians, politicians, and others with large platforms to continue to push propaganda, making light of abortion, and justifying murder in the name of choice. Justifying murder because a person is inconvenient or unwanted. It is pure evil. Despite the lies that are told, no one benefits or prospers by taking the life of any baby, no matter how the baby is conceived. My life is not better because I had an abortion. I squandered God's gift. And today I stand in my mid-40s with that, that um, opportunity of having children by birth having passed. Had I personally made better choices with my life, then abortion wouldn't have been an option. And it took years to get past the guilt and shame of what I did. That is the reality of abortion. So we are gathered in action today through remembrance and prayer to fight this evil. And I want to say, if there's any woman who is here right now, or who may see this later, and is contemplating abortion, the Lord had me come here today to give you a message from him saying, do not do it. Let him or her live. The baby you are carrying is a blessing. Don't allow the enemy to deceive and distort you the way that he did me and have you choose abortion. Muster up enough faith, just a mustard seed will do, and allow the Lord to be God personally in your life. No child is a mistake to God. And you're not alone. I have felt that way before. No matter what the circumstances are, there are resources if you need them, if you would just reach out. Many of the people here today will help in whatever way we can. And for anyone in the audience or who may listen later, who is still carrying the weight, the guilt, the shame and remorse of abortion, be it the woman if you have one abortion or if you have multiple, be it the man coerced or pushed a woman to have an abortion or the man who didn't want the abortion and you're still angry and, and, and bitter at the woman who chose to do it or the parent who coerced or pushed their child to have an abortion or the person who contributed by driving the woman to the clinic or paying for the abortion there is salvation forgiveness and healing by Jesus Christ for you just like it has been for me. If you would truly repent and surrender to him, I may have done this evil act, I may have been a statistic at one point, but I overcome evil by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. My heart has very much changed because I now value every life because I love and revere the creator and author of life. I'm a living story of true redemption because of God's truth, because of his love, because of his correction. He chastens those whom he loves because of his mercy, because of his forgiveness, and because of his healing. Only because of him am I able to stand today before all of you, no longer ashamed, I'm no longer guilt-ridden, and can firmly tell you that abortion is not an option. 
If you are struggling, please talk to someone. Come find me and we can talk. If, if, um, if you haven't truly surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, I urge you strongly to please do so. Let me tell you about the risen King who will change you from the inside out, who will take away all the dirt and make you clean through his power. If you will repent and truly follow him and not follow the evil and follow this world, he will take the mess of your life and will make it a message to glorify him, just like he's done with me and just like he's continuing to do. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you, India. And thank you, everyone, for being here today. I'd like to introduce Pastor Kevin Medcalf.